Hi, my name is Danny, and welcome to Friday on Pagan Perspective. I am subbing for Megan this week. This week, our question is all about uh, sexual allegations of harassment and abuse in the pagan community, and the whole question will be in the description below. So I'm gonna answer this question in a couple of different ways. First, I'm going to answer it from the perspective of the Catholic Church, actually. My mom was a director of religious education and was a lay minister. She had a lot of involvement in the Catholic Church in the time where they were responding to the just outpouring of allegations against priests and other people in the Catholic Church for sexual assault and abuse, particularly with children. The Catholic Church at that time did a lot of different things, and it kind of depended on what diocese you were on. But the diocese that my mom worked under had a specific program. Um, I can't remember the name, but it was like for the good of children or something like that. And she had to teach all volunteers that would work with children and anyone who was involved in the church for ministry programs this course. And this course had a lot of information about how you can be sure that you are not putting children at risk, that you are aware of the boundaries between different adults and how the power dynamic, specifically in a spiritual setting, impacts the relationship you might have with individuals. So a teacher might think that it's a really great idea to hug a small child that is crying, but you can't do that in the same manner that you instinctually might think you can do that. So approaching situations that seem really simple and easy have to be done with a lot of care and consideration for the child and that power dynamic, the boundaries that are there, not only to protect the child, but also to protect you as a teacher, a volunteer, a leader in the spiritual community. And I think all spiritual communities could be a little bit more diligent about teaching and uh, sharing with leaders, teachers, volunteers, elders, this idea that there's an inherent power dynamic difference and that we need to make sure that everyone in the community still feels safe and comfortable even when that power dynamic is really dramatic. So a student with a teacher should still feel empowered to say no, to stop, and the teachers should have lessons and tools that allow them to provide opportunities for people to feel safe, to voice their concerns, to say no, to leave, whatever is necessary. The second way I want to approach this topic is just that we are not an isolated community. Even though we are a spiritual community, we are pagans, we have a lot of counterculture ideas incorporated in our lifestyles, including perhaps a little bit more uh, balanced perspective on sexuality. We still live in a culture that is sex phobic, that has an incredibly strong patriarchy element, and you can't get away from that. So even when we're in our microcosm of our community, we have to be very diligent and aware of the baggage that we bring in. And it's it's kind of working as individuals in smaller units to combat those larger ideas that men inherently have more power, that women can be sexualized, and that people in positions of power have the right to make other people feel uncomfortable. I don't have an easy solution, and I don't think there is an easy solution. I think it's going to take diligent conversations like this, very important. I think it's going to take small communities putting in guidelines for their elders and leaders and for their members in general. So I think each coven or grove or group having a pretty clearly defined rules about what boundaries there are and what communication needs to happen when you step outside of those boundaries I think that's a really healthy way of starting the conversation. I think we need to believe each other when we come out saying that something has happened that is inappropriate or abusive or hurtful. We need to rally around people who come out like that. 
And I think we just need to keep pushing our culture forward. We have a lot of ideas and healing and magic and power in this pagan community. So let's use it to better help the larger community that we belong to. In the comments below, I know we've talked about this topic all week, but I really want to know what your top three rules or guidelines would be for your personal community. Even if you're a solitary practitioner, if you were in a group, what are the three things that you would really want to be in place that everyone understood to help prevent any abuse or to really open the conversation up in a healthy and constructive way? Thanks for watching, and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove.